The year is 2030. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon. You've just finished mining 30 obsidian ore playing Crypto Crush Saga Match 3 mobile game. You open up the Elder Chains online and you feel a rush of excitement. Your buddy from school has spent the last two years becoming a master blacksmith and he has agreed to turn 10 obsidian ore into an obsidian battle staff, a huge upgrade over the mithril mace you've been wielding for the last weeks. It'll take him an hour or so. In the meantime, you hop over to Clash of Guilds and use the remaining obsidian to upgrade your town hall to the next level. That should keep your village safe. For now. You wish you could fast forward time to tonight. Your guild has plans to go for a deep run in the wilderness in old school rune chains, and your prospects of a successful run and great loot have never been better. All members have been spending the past two weeks grinding for better weapons, and you've agreed, through a vote, to use the guild treasury to buy everyone a full set of red dragon hide armor. Tonight's objective is to kill the level 128 frost giant hiding in the cave of sorrow. He has a 5% drop chance for an immaculate orb of brilliance of which there are only four in existence. The orb can be used as a power source for an upcoming space exploration game and should give you a great advantage in reaching distant galaxies first. A 5% drop rate is low, but you're feeling optimistic. In the distance, you hear a faint. Blockchain doesn't bring anything new to games. You shrug and join your friends in the Discord voice channel. Life is good. Hashtag blockchain gaming. This is a real post by Nicholas. Investing in blockchain games at Bitcraft. Beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye. Yep. The future looks so beautiful. What he all of these video games that you can play, like right now. Yeah, what he describes is a universe where everything is basically pay to skip if you want, and one that makes no sense. These games would all have to be made with some either with a very common architecture and pipeline so that all assets are interoperable which makes no sense if one of the games is a friggin match 3 and the other one is basically star citizen so that just makes no sense so now you've got to make duplicates you know the, the same obsidian whatever in every single different game this makes no sense this will never happen the whole point of blockchain I guess for a lot of these guys, it's, you know, the decentralized element. So I suppose they're just thinking like, oh, yeah, well, your obsidian whatever thing is just an NFT. So, you know, because you own this NFT, you hook up uh, every game that you play to the wallet. Now you own the thing in every single game. But that makes no sense because all of these game companies would have to have a centralized strategy for how to deal with all of these NFTs that apparently are useful in the games. It straight up makes no sense. Yeah. From a technical perspective, from a gameplay perspective. I mean, because from a gameplay perspective, people are obviously just going to find the fastest way to grind the thing. Then they're just going to farm it out to the Philippines or something, as we already yeah. saw with Axie Infinity. But, or they'll just do what is currently happening in Lost Ark, which is I just a haven for bots. Just bot paradise. Wait, you can do something in a video game to earn real money or real money equivalent, but that thing's really simple and it's in a video game and that's on a computer. And I, I can program? Wow, incredible. It's almost as if bots haven't been fucking ruining every game with an economy that's had any sort of real world, like, virtual or value for, I, I don't, hang on, uh, about 25 years now? I, do, do any of these people live in actual reality whatsoever? Thing is, you can get humongous amounts of MAUs pretty damn easily as Axie Infinity and the uh, funding environment that led to it getting such incredibly large injections of cash uh, as that proves. That's the thing. Obviously now we perhaps are entering the crypto winter, so who knows how it's, uh, yeah. how it's all going to go, also, but... Yeah, this actually reminds me of something that's already kind of happening in a weird way, right? So, <laughs> I'm assuming you can use your battle.net balance in Diablo Immortal, right? I'm assuming you can do that. I can't see why not. Do not know. Because you can buy stuff on PC, you should be able to use your Battle.net balance. You can get Battle.net balance through gold in World of Warcraft. So if you're really good at playing the auction house in World of Warcraft, and you can, you know, make 10 million gold in a short period of time, then that can be, what is that, about 300k in Europe? Say you make 3 million gold, that's about $150 worth of Battle.net balance. 
And then you can go and buy $150 worth of Legendary Crests and Diablo Immortal. This already kind of exists, and it sucks. Yes. It's just using battle made-up Battle.net money. And now they're trying to say, what if that happens? But whenever you spend, whenever you sell all your World of Warcraft gold for BNAP balance, you can then also use that in... Fucking Star Citizen. St- fucking Star Citizen, or Starfield, or The Elder Scrolls Six or a new Skyrim re-release with all this shit baked into it. Or whatever other shitty mobile game. Who who wants this? Investors. Because all they want to do (laughs) is create a fake economy that they can skim real money out of while everybody engaging in it essentially loses. Oh, exactly. Like Blizzard are currently doing with the World of Warcraft token and it's turning into BNAP balance because it's $20 of real money. Gives you a WoW token, which gives you $15 of uh, game time. Which is twenty dollars going into the Blizzard economy, fifteen worth of value going to the player. Five dollars is raw profit for Blizzard, and that fifteen dollars never ever leaves the Blizzard yeah, the, ecosystem. The, the, the so that model. on a grand scale, yes, wonderful. I love that. The business model is really simple. You just create virtual labor for a virtual economy for virtual currency. That uh, someone's buying with then, real money. Yeah, the only yeah. difference is. The output of this virtual economy does nothing for society. Mm. Unlike the real economy, where houses get built, food gets produced, clothes get made, innovative new products come to the market. Mm. That's what it's supposed to do. But instead, what you do is you create a fake market so that then you can essentially capture the people in some bizarre form of weird servitude Mm. where ideally... You know, they're going to keep on top of their health so they can stay paying for longer um, into a highly, probably, I mean, if it's like that country, a uh, highly corrupt uh, healthcare system that's ludicrously expensive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got that going. You have people working maybe eight, maybe 12 hours a day. And then instead of coming home and uh, making something with their hands, watching Netflix, cooking a, an exciting new meal, learning a new skill, instead, you get them to then spend four or five hours clocking into a virtual economy where they have no output, basically, that is, you know... Tangible. Sort of tangible. um, Where they can then take money from their real economic participation and, you know, put it in to get better ahead in this weird fake economy that's been created. Because um, everything means... It just means nothing. It's a complete, absolute, utter nothing that is being designed to capture people's attention so that, uh, you know, they can essentially work for the man and then come home and they think they're playing when in fact they're still working for the man yes that's the whole point yeah because play to earn is just working that's yes what, that's what it is that's what a job is is you're turning time into money playing to earn is your time is a little bit enjoyable so it's a little bit like having a nice job but it's not even turning into money anymore so it's not even a job it's worse than a job it's and turning people- into fake money the people who basically ended up being, uh, you know, almost the battery chickens of, of mm. wild gold farming, they will tell you that it very fast is not a fun job. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, that's even... It wasn't very fun and had loads of health problems for the people who are doing it voluntarily. Never mind the people who are doing it under literal servitude in concentration camps and prisons, I think, was one of the one examples. What? Yeah, yeah. There's a couple, because I've been preparing a video for the uh, Warcraft channel about this stuff, and there's literally, like, just so many documentaries, like, oh, yeah, here's the Chinese prison, where all the prisoners, instead of doing prison labor, like, you know, what is it they do in the U.S., making license plates, or, you know, grinning stuff like mining or breaking rocks and stuff, it's like, yeah, here's a computer. You can play World of Warcraft in prison. Doesn't that sound great? Except you're not playing World of Warcraft. You're specifically farming gold. And then that gold will be sold by the prison warden. And that'll go through a chain of people, end up being bought by some Westerner for like $15, $20 for the amount. The warden gets to keep most of it. And it's just a big exploitative system of virtual work because it has real value to someone. Oh, that's horrific. Yeah, but all that money is going into this pit and not leaving it. Well... Let's talk about the new games that are trying to do this. So the first NFT game on the Epic Store is is on its way. Hmm. Yeah. So breaking NFT gaming platform Go Gala Games announces partnership with Epic to launch Battle Royale game Grit on the store. First NFT game integration between Web 2 and 3. Huge day for NFT gaming at hashtag Galaverse. 
Woo! <laughs> Calipers. Yeah. It's always a hashtag, too. Everyone has a verse. Uh, so it's an upcoming ride or die battle royale. Masses of gunslingers meet in solo duo or squad matches and test their skills against the backdrop of the Wild West. In grid, players need to saddle up and shoot up a storm as you uh, as you gun your way through town. Each match will test your skills and strategy against you. Blah, 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 blah. Shootouts, right? Uh, now, this overall is in line with the Epic Games policy of uh, welcoming blockchain games, assuming they meet a bunch of criteria and kind of follow the laws. Um, so, yeah, Tim had talked a little bit about, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of scam stuff going on. They're not down on that, but... The legit stuff, they're obviously a bit more okay with. Yeah. Now, we already know about uh, some things about Gala Games. So, number one, they convinced Peter Molyneux and various uh, IP license holders. Battlestar Galactica. Fucking kill me. Uh, the Walking Dead. Uh, that they would be good partners to work with on video games because, you know, every video game outing of the Battlestar Galactica franchise, I guess actually Deadlock is pretty awesome, but, mm -hmm. you know, the other ones, not good. Uh, I don't think this will help. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, so that's just the sort of, I mean, shuffle loads of shite that, that they make, so that's yeah. cool. Like, remember back in the day whenever shovelware existed, and it was maybe some, like, uh, I guess I'll use the meme example, Corey in the house for DS, and that was just shovelware. Yeah. But at least you bought it for real money, it's like, well, this wasn't very good. That was a good version of shovelware. Now this version of shovelware is somehow a just hellscape nightmare of NFT land. God. Yeah, now a big thing here is that this is giving them kind of like institutional acceptance. Yeah. And that's why I think this is a decently major story. So they say this is a historic agreement. Two giants and different sides of the industry have came together to change the gaming landscape forever. We don't want that. <laughs> uh, Epic is well known for their uh, expansive reach, massive titles, and huge following. Gala is the pioneer of Web3 gaming. So... That's essentially it. And if you're maybe wondering, you know, how have they made this jump so quickly to making like, a real big video game and all of that? Why is this insidious? Why is this bad? Well, that's where we need to talk about grit. So basically, Gala Games took a nearly finished game and then they added their own spin. So Team Grit are making the game called Grit. Uh, some pretty high profile names like Bob Berry and John Mavor, who worked on Planetary Annihilation and Monday Night Combat, are involved in spearheading this studio. The game is scheduled to be Steam Early Access January 5th, 2022. It was then delayed January 25th, uh, sorry, on January 25th, to a unspecified date. You may wonder why. Well, because then Gala announced the partnership with Team Grit on the 15th of February, but this connection wasn't picked up until the Galaverse on June 26th, 2022. This is when they announced the first NFT drop for this game um, and then confirmed that Grit would be appearing in the Epic Games Store. Yep. So basically, they acquired or made a big investment, whatever, and now we are going to have uh, NFTs that are, I guess, Galaverse compatible in Grit, all in the Epic Games Store. Yep, which obviously discounts it from Steam because Steam doesn't allow NFTs on the platform because Steam kind of go, what's the point of these? Is this good for the user? You didn't literally say yes. You tried to explain yes without saying yes, so no, get away. Yes. So now, good, good for them. Uh, Venture Beats, uh, Pay for Access Shill, Dean, Dean Takahashi, uh, also wrote about this announcement and has previously interviewed uh, Gala Management, and that is what Dean is, make no mistake. It's even funny that like Jeff Grubb has a joke mm. at Dean Takahashi's expense in his Twitter bio. Yeah, because everyone knows it's Takahashi. He's a fucking joke. And I'm not saying that because he was bad at Cuphead. As funny no. as that was, far more importantly, it is, uh, you know, just being fucking basically running defense for um, uh, your man in France, oh, David Cage. Remember. Yeah. Uh, and all of his, uh, yeah, very looking down the nose uh, articles, uh, you know, on like NFT related stuff. So basically, like, look, if you are a Web3 gaming company, you, you know, Dean's your man. Go to yeah, Dean. He, he will be an uncritical mouthpiece for you, generally speaking. Yes, That's that what is. Seems to be how VentureBeat runs. 
that is the Takahashi special. So uh, to celebrate the, the Galaverse starting today in Malta, Gala Games will be offering uh, a special sale of the Gunslinger box, which will unlock oh. one of 10,000 great avatars. Each character has its own specific perks and attributes that the owner can play as in the game. Attributes are generative and will provide a unique look to each character. Owners will be able to take with them, uh, you know, take them with them in game, uh, you know, their preferred loadout, a specific weapon, skins, things like that, providing them an advantage over their counterparts. Ah, great. So, <laughs> just you know, out of the gate, this is the pinnacle of Web three gaming. <laughs> that there are paid advantages to people who uh, have the the uh, the more rare, the more interesting NFTs. Yeah. Uh, so, following. Wait, is that how much one box costs? Yeah. One box costs one and a half grand. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, here we go. So here's the bit that's crazy. It almost made me do a double take, but it is true. So uh, Gala have their own token here, the Gala token. So following conversion, uh, the 25,000 uh, Gala token that it costs to get one of these gunslinger boxes comes out to about one and a half grand for a generative character with just under half of uh, that sort of cohort of gunslinger boxes. Uh, being available for purchase. Now, resellers may have it cheaper. This is the direct selling price. But essentially, like 5,000 plus of these have sold. That's the asking price. Yeah, do you want to wow. get a small advantage in a game that isn't out yet? That's a Western Battle Royale. I mean, obviously, like the Grid Trailer, actually, it looks pretty good. Well, hard to say without actually like, seeing a bunch of gameplay, but like the trailer, like, it looks like it's been developed, especially from like the Monday Night Combat. That's that's decent pedigree yeah. for a good game, but you just get owned by people who paid fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, sounds like a great experience for me. Who will have a generative character that will look unique and seemingly will be able to just take their preferred yep. weapon loadout. Uh, loadout. Um, so there you go. It's like uh, Warzone loadout drops, except uh, fifteen hundred bucks to get that from the outset. Outset. <laughs> <laughs> wild now there is a bunch of confusion here because even on the discord for this game they're pointing out that quote the nft stuff isn't going to be in the playtest version of the game for some time so there is some capacity for change um we can then see just the whole discourse going on i'm sure if this is a game that you followed and were very interested in earlier on this year before this was all announced then you're probably thinking oh wow <laughs> yeah. My passion was uh, used to sell. Cool. Hmm. Now, there is a good bit of news here. The whole thing seems to have gone quite badly. Thank okay? God. So, there's the general dislike of the Web3 stuff being shoved into games, but uh, they actually fumble things even more because of a horse. So it's another horse. It's another this horse. It's not armor this time. It's beautiful. It rhymes. Uh, right then, this horse. Uh, these were airdropped to convention attendees who paid eight grand to attend Galaverse. Yes, oh, all Galaverse attendees were airdropped their insane epic chest. Only 500 are in exit. And this is the insane epic chest. It's a horse. Oh, it's no. a model of a horse. And I, I guess some randomization for the bits that are on it. Awesome. And these people are stupid enough to think that flipping around a bunch of parameters for a model is like enough to be like, oh, wow, look at this. It's cool and unique. Who do you think? A lot of them? Bunch of... Fucking brain, that's I tell you. Yeah. So it turns out that uh, these airdropped horses uh, were actually uh, horses that people had seen before on the Unreal Asset Store for 29 bucks. So essentially what these freaking charlatans have done is they've just taken a bunch of horses and there's either two things that have happened. They've take, uh, taken all the different parameters and they've just said, okay, we'll maybe randomize the color within these bounds. We'll randomize what, uh, you know, accoutrements the horses have and uh, we will just ensure that there are no dupes for the horses, whatever. But basically they just kit bash what costs 30 bucks um, and then a bunch of morons buy that for uh, eight grand each. Yeah. Nice game. Yeah, and this isn't, obviously this isn't, oh, we've bought a horse for $30 and sold it for 8000 We have bought the data for horses for $30. So it's not like they're making a seven nine seventy profit on every horse. It's literally just we've bought the rights to this thing. And this probably isn't included in the terms of service whatsoever for this. This is probably against the rules to go, oh, this, we'll sell, oh, we'll buy this and then sell it again for... 
an obscenely high Well, what's funny price. then is that even on this, they've actually had to backtrack. They said, the Grit Horse NFT pictured in the tweets was a placeholder asset, the NFT, which was given away uh, for free and exclusive to attendees. Uh, I mean, the attendees obviously paid. <laughs> yeah. um, this will be replaced with the correct image when finalized. Which then just kind of begs the question, where are you getting the horse from? Are you just going to model your own then? Um, how did this happen? This... This is clearly ass covering, in my opinion. Yep. So the game's not released. It's not an early access. The store page doesn't actually have a date. Uh, the blockchain integration actually isn't even implemented in the technical tests and betas that they're running. Um, is just quickly should basically thrown in by Gala because they want to look like they're having a proper, you know, big real game yeah. instead of all of these weird just nft games like even axie infinity the kind of they have so little to them yeah i mean i think it's the case of gala probably running around with a big amount of money from very 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 interested people who can kind of go oh well, can we get into this market early and you know dominate it and become mega billionaires off all of this by exploiting people let's go okay we'll give a couple mil to like a a small game that looks promising and obviously if you're the developer of grit or whatever else and someone goes hey fire these in we've got a good selling point because all of these places will have like really good arguments especially if they're with you in person and they have a load of money to kind of throw at you and you just kind of get swept up and like oh yeah this, this actually is great and you're not sure if it's you or the like check they've just put down for any talking yeah and that's how this stuff happens they don't actually ever do anything or need to do anything they just get a big amount of investor money and then spin around in circles making loads of promises never getting anything done with it and, like, obviously for us, they're promising a massive downgrade. But everyone's just so swept up in all of the glitz and glam of the money, they don't really seem to give yeah, a shit. It's, it's just it's where the money's going. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much. And there's even weird things, like the Twitter account for Grit for ages just pointed to the old website that made no reference to the NFTs, no reference to Gala, mm -hmm. and that has been updated. Um, but, it's, but it's weird, mm -hmm. right? I wonder what it's like as a developer there. Um, Can't be good. There's more things happening. I mean, Zola, the payment processing company, if you had a Twitch subscription, yeah. you maybe will have noticed that Zola are, I don't know if they are still, but at least for a very long time, they were the payment provider of Twitch. Mm. Um, but, you know, they're, of course, launching into NFTs because, look, if you're in the finance side of games, then obviously these this is an emerging market. They're going to want to have a stake in yeah, there. Yeah, Zola has, like, they call them the transaction engine and business engine which are these just integrations and things for working on the back end of your game to try and monetize all of your, your games better, stuff like that. Same way in the sense that, you know, you, someone who makes a mobile game isn't deciding all of the ads themselves. They'll hook into a platform that does it for them. Yeah. That takes all your data and goes, oh, we'll serve you these ads. But it's the same, but to do with microtransactions and businesses and stuff like that. And this is where a while ago we talked about uh, the kind of practices that are a little bit behind the curtain. Stuff like the fact that probabilities from FIFA Ultimate Team's loot boxes could theoretically be di like dynamic and determined based on you as a player. In the same way, like a slot machine will go, oh, well, you haven't won so many times, we'll give you one now. But a lot more dynamic and a lot more kind of possibly predatory. It's the same stuff kind of going on a little bit behind the curtain here where it's not quite clean cut. Yeah. And now that transaction engine those business engines are being built to bring nfts into the fold because why not yeah and i think it's now time that we take a look at one of these games with deep integration that actually is out in the wild yeah. that is nico uh, nino kuni uh cross worlds mm -hmm. where uh yeah it's interesting the community's not thrilled um no. they don't have a lot of faith in that marble oh well that marble uh didn't end up making a video on it, but there's a lot of stuff going on with Netmarble historically that's very much like these are not good people to get in bed with. Yes, they, what they've essentially done is they've monetized the bots by yeah. uh, creating the uh, the Daily Adventurer's Pass for seven ninety nine to bypass the queue. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that was a little bit taken a little bit out of context. It's actually a monthly battle pass that does have a premium queue element to it, yeah. but the queue only exists because there are tons of bots because the, the queues are a lot bigger in the areas where you farm the crypto stuff. Surprise. So everyone's going, oh yeah, no, this is bots. This is a very simple game. This is a very simple game that you can earn money from. So obviously, like with World of Warcraft back in the day, 
like with Lost Ark today. People are just going to make bots. Yeah. Because why would you not? If you can auto, it's the same way as like, oh, well, there's a load of money in that river. Oh, there's too much for me to grab myself. I guess I'll autom- I'll go and make a load of bots to you know go panning for gold. I mean, that's the thing. In, in the gold rush days in the US, if people could have made bots to do that, they absolutely would have. So why not do it here? Obviously, that be- the, the, the answer to why not is because it completely shits on the game experience for all these people. And now they've accidentally, and I imagine they didn't intend this, but maybe they did when they knew, when they made this mind, oh, there's a, there's a priority queue in the battle pass. Well, do we expect queues in our games? Why would our game have a queue? Because of bots. Because we've looked at other games in the market. Because these people aren't stupid. Yeah. The people who design, especially the monetization stuff, they know what they're doing. You get it from, even from people who were like 15, 16 back in the early 2000s and going over the real value of virtual economies. None of this is actually new, like in terms of the people who are behind the curtain. All this stuff has been known about and talked about and discussed internally since the late 90s. And it's just, here we go. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. We'll create a problem and monetize the solution. And whenever you hear people talking about their mobile game spending as investing, that's language you'll hear with a lot of whales, this adds a level of, oh yeah, it is an investment because you're getting a real currency. You can really cash out. And what's going to be very interesting is if you can cash out, how many countries are going to turn around and say, oh, by our rigid definition, that is gambling. Yep, That's what I'm very interested in. So it's the sort of thing where, did they intend for this to monetize bots and stuff? Who knows? But it certainly is having that effect. Because, hey, I mean, if you're Lost Ark, like, you're not getting a monthly subscription from every bot, that kind of sucks for you, right? Uh, so there you go. Now, um, Netmarble have offered real money through grinding in the game. That basically means there's a reason for all this weird virtual work. That means there's an incentive for the bots. It means there's an incentive for people to just spend a whole bunch of money to increase their potential to earn uh, within the game. Um, yeah, so we've got, of course, the the whole thing we talked about before this game, the Territe token, yeah. which is a utility token on the Marblex platform. And uh, to get Territe, you can earn it by uh, doing dailies, familiar adventures, or hunting uh, hunting monsters in the Chaos Fields. Uh, Chaos Fields, I believe, is where we're having queues. Yep. Uh, so you get the Territe, which turns into Territe token, which turns into Marblex, which then goes to a cryptocurrency exchange where you could then turn it into something a little bit more... Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum. Fiat, if you wanted, or... Yep, or then get that. go that way. Yep, absolutely. And now I remember what it was that was a little bit shady about this that we didn't get to cover last time. And it was the, <laughs> the literally against TO. I think they cancelled it because it was against Terms of Service in the end. But they were beginning an event where they would give people in-game items for giving for posting a screenshot of their own verified review, a five-star review on the App Store wow. and the Play Store. So they were very much literally using the the very like bottom of the barrel. First idea comes to your head. Obviously, it's not good faith kind of tactics. Yeah, like incentivized reviews are not allowed on app stores. Yes, that's why they wow. ultimately aren't allowed to do it because they got caught yeah. uh, organizing this because it was just on their like public Discord they were doing it. It was like a full event. Like, hey, we're running an event. Post a review and get some items. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? You're insane. And then there was something else as well. Oh yeah, it's just the fact that the game is actually fully pay to win as well. Yeah. In course. terms of the gacha stuff is equipment and gear and also the pet stuff. So you can invest like you're saying about investments. Now, when you're rolling gacha, because it increases your earn rate, because you earn more territe and you earn more of the other currency, I can't remember what it's called, when you're doing higher difficulty stuff or you're higher ranked in PvP, then it is an investment. It's like, it is literally, imagine Diablo Immortal, but you could farm real money equivalent. And that's it. That's what this was. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, what? You're... Uh ASICs and shit have meant that your mining rig is now useless. It's okay. Yeah. Do some weird botting on it. Woohoo. Yeah, so in- yeah, so instead of buying a graphics card to increase your rate of um, getting currency, buy some in-game items to increase your mining rate. You Not go. literally the same, but close enough in effect. Yeah. It's such a fucking hellscape, man. Yeah, so look, that's the hell that they want to create. Um, it is one we need to guard ourselves against. 
Um, as I said at the top of the video, it's that thing of they want to replicate the labor market, just that there will be no real life societal or individual benefits of the fake labor market that they wish to create. Because in order to create that virtual work market that they then deeply monetize, like that is not perfectly in line with generating the best time, yeah. the best entertainment for your users. Mm -hmm. If that kind of game is what's making all the money, we're not going to have transformative experiences within gaming if that ends up being the predominant thing because games will just turn into some really weird virtual economy thing where, you know, it might not make sense for, uh, like if there's a lot of, you know, maybe people uh, in more well-off countries, like maybe it won't affect us that much because maybe we'll still, you know, earn more money in a retail job or something like that. But for a lot of people in, uh, you know, in other countries, we saw in like Venezuela, I believe it was with Axie. Uh, it was the Philippines as well with, with Axie. Philippines Axie. Venezuela is always the one they talk about RuneScape with, ah, where okay. a lot of people started farming RuneScape gold there and RuneScape items because it was more efficient than going to work because of the hyperinflation in that country that yeah. had to deal with. So in a lot of countries where the tiny amount that you'll basically earn in a you know, on a weekly basis or a daily basis in these games where that will go way further in terms of your purchasing power. The, like, the, they just they just want to capture loads of human hours and loads of human time to go into this system so that ultimately they can extract more money from the people who are doing, you know, what are maybe an upper quintile or something yeah. of, uh, you know, of the economy in the more wealthy countries. Yeah. It's like, it's, imagine, obviously, you've got, the whole problem with support thing where people were, you know, worried about call centers being farmed out to like less developed countries. And that's the thing where obviously they do that because that's, they pay a lot less to give the same value. But imagine that, but instead of it being a call center, it's just farming in game items. It's the same mechanic of, oh, the more developed country will pay a disproportionate amount and that'll mean more profit from anyone there. Yeah. But instead of it providing actual support, it's just farming and game items, which are all... Obviously, I understand the personal value one might have attached to items in video games, because obviously the, that that whole thing is real value for a reason. But it's not real, real, real value. And that kind of happened by accident. Well, they're weaponizing the yeah. importance that we assign to things in game. Yeah. Because the very same reason that you maybe spent a whole bunch of time to get the cool sword in World of Warcraft... Now they are trying to turn that into a form of monetization. So it's quite tricky because virtual things can feel real. And that is very open for extreme exploitation in a situation like this. So it's kind of using what can make games and stuff like that like feel meaningful. You know, why we would really be driven on to progress in World of Warcraft or something. And it's just using that for this like horrible twisted purpose. It's just creating an economy that serves honestly nobody no but the kind of super wealthy by yeah. just creating this like humongous class of 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 minnows and free to plays who are like doing this weird play to earn but they're not it's like i i guess in a country where you can't find a job like that maybe it's going to be the thing that you do yeah that might be but, helpful individually yes yeah I'm but sure. you just like worry about what this like actually means if it takes off and ultimately like we're in the forefront of, mm. of society there's things going on now that 30 years ago our parents could not have imagined or under, or even understand today if you explain to them because it's yeah. so insane and the same like we may think we're special we may think we all know mm. how things are going to go and what it's going to be like but maybe there'll be things that'll happen in 30 or 40 years time that you know we'll bar barely be able to understand or if you told us they would happen now we think it's crazy but it does slowly happen, and the change suddenly gets so great that like you don't even know what you're looking at yeah. anymore. I mean, I've got actually two specific examples that might highlight this fairly well. One is from the Axie Infinity documentary that the... Oh, I can't remember what the... I don't know if it's a publisher or somewhere related. Somewhere definitely, literally, we are showing you the best version of this, the shiniest form of this, because it's in our incentive to do so. And it kind of... It was running as like a little underground or like a little sub-process in my brain when I was watching going, this is a bit weird. I understand the whole positive element... The, positive element of hey covid's ravaged this town so people are like afraid to go out and work because they'll get sick and you know people vulnerabilities might die and stuff like that so they've turned to making money digitally 
and they're providing this like false value for the wealthy West to you know disproportionately pay the wages. But because no one was out physically working, the place was deteriorating. Like no one was actually holding up the shop, so no one could come and buy stuff. So there were people starving, and it's like the actual core kind of the work wasn't being done anymore because everyone was in their house doing this digital work. It like it almost it breaks matter. the meaning of money in a way. It does, when yeah. the money's all going into like fake things that aren't real. Yeah. When there's real things like food and yeah. raw materials and clothing and shelter. Yeah. And that an economy should be producing. So the larger this shitty, not real economy is, there's just nothing yeah. work that yeah. no one's getting anything out of. It's yeah. crazy. And all of that value is completely arbitrary from the game developer because they get to twist and tweak the knobs. Obviously, when it's decentralized, that's not the case. But the initial stuff still is the kind of the, the game balance of actually infinity is and that's the kind of thing we go well is this all just made up is this all is it is someone just making all of this up what the hell is going on but the other example i have is ready player one and this is a weird one because obviously ready player one was this nostalgia bit novel written by a okay writer maybe and then they made a Spielberg movie out of it where Spielberg only directed like one scene and everything else was just <laughs> was just CG nightmare. And obviously all the, all the things about that movie aside, the one thing that always stuck out to me is that everyone talking about it was like, oh, this is the this is the metaverse. This is what virtual reality could be. Isn't this so such a utopia? Isn't this so perfect? Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this such an aspirational thing for society? And I'm just sat there going, did you watch the fucking movie? Did you see with the opening part? where they're all in a trailer park that's stacked like skyscrapers because no one has any money and no one's doing any work and everyone's useless. Apparently, most people didn't see that part yeah. or think about it. They went, oh, but shiny metaverse, happy, happy. And it's weird because like, I was listening to, <laughs> you know, uh, The Zuck on, yeah. um, on the Tim Ferriss podcast. And it's like, I know they are both really smart guys. Yeah, and they're so stupid? <laughs> and they are talking about Ready Player One like almost as if it's a good thing <laughs> and like maybe this is people's heads just being so completely mazed by references that yeah. they're like oh cool the iron giant shot those dudes yeah yeah like maybe if uh ryan gosling had yeah. a few marvel characters and uh and, and disney characters and things like that in blade runner uh, you know, the new Blade Runner, the people would have thought, oh, wow, look at that. That's really cool. Wish I was born in that century with the flying cars. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. The point has been missed. Yeah. Oh, my but God. But this is a case where the point can conveniently be missed. Yeah. I think, I, well, I mean, just as far as Zuckerberg and Tim Ferriss, I think it might just be a case of the Emperor's, like, new clothes. It very yeah. much feels like that. It's like, why, <laughs> why is no one saying this is fucking stupid? Because it really is. Jesus Christ. Oh my there God. you go. So uh, yeah. there's a... There's some musings well, on particularly NFTs. brief, but certainly a dive into the uh, the coming horror. Uh, let's very much hope this doesn't catch on. I think one good thing, at least, is um, Valve are sticking to their guns. Yeah. It seems so far. Um, seems this stuff's going to be kept out of steam. And yeah. I think that is big. Now, there certainly is a generic concern that a single entity in the market being so impactful is like a kind of problematic thing. Here, it's a little bit weird. Valve have so much power. It's like a little bit uncomfortable they have so much power, but also they kind of are using it in the right direction in this particular issue. So that is a good thing. Yeah, Steam will just funny. end up being a shelter for video games by the end of the fucking like decade. That's what's going to be. Yeah, well, that's it. If they come for Steam, they'll have to go through Gaben and his big knife collection, so yeah. I think we'll all be okay. Right. Absolutely. That's the story, I suppose. If you found yourself in Crossworld somehow, how has it been? Yeah, please <laughs> um, let us know. And yeah, I don't know if you have one of these special horses, let us know, but I feel <laughs> like the people with the special horses maybe are not viewers of our channel. Anyway, the very least. And they would be after this video. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope we kept your brain tickled for uh, at least a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, use this as a jumping off point to go and play some real video games. Uh, two really good examples, Citizen Sleeper came out, mm. and I think if you're worried about spooky things that could be happening, go check out Citizen Sleeper. Should definitely disclose it is published by the same publisher, uh, as us, but I do genuinely think it's a really good game. And its ratings are really high. Anyway, yeah. most importantly, that's a real game. Uh, you can also wish this The Pale Beyond on Steam, which is the video game that we are making as well. So that's it. Have a good day. 
See you next time.